Hello. <laughs> went to the went to the doctors today. It wasn't it, it wasn't it, it wasn't good news. It's really bad. Getting warm. It was, it was, it was very bad. I, I, I have HIV. Oh, it's not for lucky, Oh, I planned it out to be really miserable. Oh, well, anyway, let's go back into character. <laughs> I've, I've, I've got HIV. <laughs> the doctor sat me down, he said, it's your only positive feature. <laughs> yeah! Am I right? Yeah! I've not really got HIV, don't worry, Betsy, it's fine, it's fine. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm clean, mostly, I mean, you know, what they say? Mostly, at 99.9, like Domestos only kills 99.9% .9 of all known germs. I am 99.9% .9 STD free, it's the best. It's the best you can hope for. Um, well, I mean, as you know, my family have had some health problems, of course, the, the, the lineage, the Jones lineage, of course. We used to, there used to be a, a doe allergy that what? ran. What? No, get it out of your system, what? <laughs> that ran through my family line, of course. In the end, it was uh, bread out of us. Yeah. <laughs> I've got loads of these, don't worry. Don't, 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 even, don't even get me started on my uncle that got sent to the penal colony. He, he died. As, as did 73% of people sent to penal colonies, actually. But it's still funny because, of course, penal sounds like penis. And my uncle and the convicts no doubt lolled themselves to death and died of pain. A very banterous death, of course. Laughter is the best cure. Not for cancer, obviously. But hopefully for HIV, which is why, you know, I'm, I'm up here. Now, um, in a slight diversion, I was told to dedicate this show to Betsy and our, our enduring love and the fact that she has collected my heart in her in her jar of hearts. <laughs> uh, after, after being called the dwarf, I don't think I will. Me and Bess are now off for good. Oh! Um, next time Betsy falls down like the Twin Towers onto the floor of Largo's, I will not be there to pick her up. <laughs> That's how serious things have got. <laughs> anyway, so. I'm up here today to talk to you a little bit about allergies. A subject very close to my heart as I am allergic to most things, up to and including human love and affection. Um, what are you saying? People think allergies, you know, they're preserved of weak, weak, nerdy, emaciated, small, pathetic human beings such as myself. But this is not true. You see, allergies, allergies that give you certain superpowers, they make you more confident, etc. You have to speak to restaurant staff and say, oh, does it contain nuts? And other, other such things. But they also mean that you face down death. Do you contain nuts? Do you want to contain nuts, Betsy? <laughs> death on a daily basis. So when the time comes you have to kill a grown man naked in a Turkish bathhouse beneath the cold December moon. Death doesn't seem so frightening anymore. But 
<laughs> yeah, I know. I've lived, I've lived life, Katie. I've lived it. I've lived it. And of course, some people, though, I've, I've met some people on my travels, my allergy related travels, who have developed specific, specific superpowers relating to their various allergies. For example, I will now tell you a tale, which will seem, seem improvised. <laughs> uh, I, was on, I was on Liverpool to Manchester train. It's horrifying already. So, sorry, Tom Kirby. <laughs> what, what, we have trams, man! We what? have trams! <laughs> Fucking trams! They never work! I'm getting heckled. I'm heckled by a man with no sense of smell. He can smell. He can't smell a bad joke. He can't smell anything anyway. Anyway, I got the bad joke. No, I didn't. What are you talking about? He's crazy, man. He's crazy. He's insane. He's mental. The mentalist. Anyway, so. It's all on, oh, none of this is scripted. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. I was on the Liverpool to Manchester train, if you'll picture the scene. I was sat alone in the midnight carriage, just me at this other table. That's not funny, you have to have midnight carriage. I see it, it sounds like crude innuendo, I get it, I like it. Um, just, just myself at this other adjacent table of, you know, the lads on tour type, you know, they were. They were talking about what, what lads talk about, you know, Top Gear, tits, football, women, petrol, the 2008 economic crash, the Rwandan, the Rwandan genocide, you know what they talk about. That's a lie. Two of those things are not real. They didn't talk about football. Anyway, nonetheless, they, they, were, they, they were drinking, they were eating nuts, and I was sat on the other table, scared, alone, pale, single, all because I can't eat nuts, you see, and then, and then between, yeah, yeah, laughing at the bits that weren't meant to be punchlines, it's going well, it's going strong while I'm on this, alright, um, yeah, so, the chief lad, the godfather, if you will, that's why, that's why I played the solo previously, nice, that was kind of like a wince and a groan, but okay, um, yeah, so the, the godfather of the lads, he offered me a nut. And I said, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry mate, I, I'm allergic to nuts, my good fellow. It's very kind of you to offer, but you know, one simply cannot accept, one cannot join your late night nut orgy. <laughs> Who knows what will happen to my poor windpipe and other areas. Um, and, uh, and it took, it took the mere mention of an allergy for this man to start telling me about his own allergy. In, and, well, what basically, the man was allergic to a brand of beer. He was allergic to Foster's, none of the other beers, just specifically Foster's. And it had a very interesting effect in that all the things nuts do to my windpipe, they make it swell, they make it short, they make me moonwalk Flatline Street into the grave. All the things that nuts... That was, that was meant to come earlier, but I forgot because people were shouting stuff out, so that'll, I'll graph it in there. Um, all the things that nuts do to my windpipe, they do to a different area of this man's body. A very personal, very essential, his penis. Right? In case anyone was, wasn't on board, they make his dick swell up huge, apparently, this Foster's. Right? You can even, even give it a name, call it Foster's Cock. And the lads, the other guys, they couldn't get enough, they loved a bit of Foster's Cock, like, Oi! Foster's Cock! Foster's Cock! Foster's... Yeah, oh, hello. Foster's Cock! 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 They couldn't, they couldn't get enough of the Foster's cock. But this guy, every time he went to, you know, have sex with his wife. <laughs> it's, a, it's a dirty word, isn't it? You can't say that into a microphone. And it's, oh, oh, like um, and, uh, every time he went to have sex with his wife, he'd drink a load of Foster's first, you know, make his cock bigger and improve the experience. So he was bringing his Foster's cock into play. Every time he had sex, he was taking the Foster's, and then afterwards, he had to take antihistamine to bring the swelling down, otherwise he couldn't pee. And none of these things were apparently too horrifying to tell a complete stranger on the Manchester-Liverpool late-night train. But it got me thinking, every single sexual act performed by this man was a complex chemical balancing act, because the Foster's cock, he needed enough for it to function, 
But then he needed to balance it out with the antihistamine. You see, now, too much antihistamine, they don't mix with alcohol. It knocks you out and can cause death. I know this because I'm allergic to stuff. So, he was embarking on a very complicated dance with death, a chemical, a chemical romp with the reaper, if you will, every time he wanted to have sex. I was like, well, this is a lot of effort. If one man's willing to do this, is a business that could be made out of this, why I could be making millions here. So I hit the emergency stop button, prized open the train doors, leapt off and returned to my house to plan and think. And plan and think, oh, I planned and thought of it. Um, I thought if only all the beers could have the Foster's cock effect without, without the without the anaphylactic shock of the penis, which comes with it. I thought I could, I could make my whole, a whole brand of beers that could serve as sexual aids, if you will. You could have, you could have Bud Wiener, for example. Here we go, got a few. Heinecock. Instead of Heineken, am I right? Yeah. yeah. Um, instead of Copper Bird, Copper Cock. I <laughs> but maybe that sounds a bit too much like an illness, doesn't it? Cockerbird! Yeah. Cockerbird's better! Strong boner! Strong boner is good as well! I, I, that's, that's, this is good! You know your beer cock based humour. Uh, yeah, I thought, well, I can't have copper cock because it sounds like a, a, a legitimate problem. You go into the doctors, you get some pills, you're copper cock. What? said funny do it what <laughs> what's that betsy hayden that was funny no <laughs> what, what's funny i've got one cockness for guinness cockness <laughs> great nine out of ten mate that's wrong <laughs> yeah. yeah we'll talk more I'll later we'll talk more about business plan later it's just beautiful i thought well if one man's willing to risk death surely Millions of other people will also. What worried me was that while he was talking to me, he was drinking Fosters. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it was deeply, deeply concerning. But of course, this is my future business. I'm going to give up on the writing. I'm going to go into the manufacture of beer cock based puns. <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely the future. And it taught me, it taught me that you don't need to fear allergies, you need to use them to your advantage. See, an allergy may seem like just a, you know, Something that a kid that should have been drowned at birth has. It's just, <laughs> you just hold its little head under water and you can push it until it's done! <laughs> Would be one way to kill a child, I don't know. I've, 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 I've never, never, never killed a child. Yet, of course. I mean, the night's yet young, who knows? Um, uh, yeah, so, yeah, they can. Not allergy. Allergies are not a bad thing at all. They can make you a. They can make you a businessman, they can make you a <coughs> sexual god, which is what, I, incidentally, I put on my uh, my year seven employment thing, when I made sexual god, I put, and now I've found a way. So the message that I want to leave you with tonight is that stop taking the piss out of people with allergies, specifically me, because, <laughs> <laughs> because you never know the, the night you could be having with me, let's see. <laughs> <laughs>